we are live. So, welcome to Mandalorian Season 1, Episode 8, Thoughts. So, this episode is called Redemption. And... Let's see, so... Yeah. Love the score as we watch the, the two scout troopers... One of the scout troopers punched Grogu. That's freaking weird, to be honest. Maybe Moff wants to eat it. I don't ask questions. Holy crap, these guys are despicable. And we get a visuals joke about Stormtrooper aim. I mean, if you watch the original trilogy, I especially noted it in episode 4. It's really more of an issue of plot armor for major characters than bad aim in general. Like, watch their aim when they're boarding the ship that Leia is on. Grogu the Yoda can bit his finger. And IG-11 demolishes the two scout troopers bad ass. Yeah, that mounted gun really kicks ass. I'm pretty sure I used one Jedi outcast. Moff tries to intimidate the trio by going over their biographies. Big deal, I can skim Wikipedia too. JK, love the scene. We see more flashbacks to Mando's childhood. In addition to Super Battle Royals, we also see they have at least one of those, like, uh, yeah, I, I don't quite know how to describe it, but a, a ship that we see the Separatists use in the in the prequels. Good at in, uh, attention to detail. We see Din Djarin be rescued by a Mandalorian as a child. Love the silhouette shot and the guitar riff. Quill has been terminated. Okay, that has to be a reference to the James Cameron movies, and I am here for it. IG-11 continues to be absolutely badass. Get you a nanny who can demolish a platoon of stormtroopers whilst taking perfect care of the baby. I, I saw one reaction where they were like, oh, that baby's having the time of his life right now. Awesome action as the trio join IG-11 gunning down stormtroopers. Moff destroys the power sources of the E-Web. Clever, very tactical. It would be ridiculous for him to... I mean, yeah, by that point he already tried to shoot Mando through the armor and the Beskar stopped that. And Mando's got the big gun, so yeah. The, the power source, that's exactly the, the right call to make. I love that once Grogu was being threatened, IG-11 got the guns out, and Grogu uses telekinesis against the flamethrower, throwing, you know, literally pushing it, the fire back on him. It's super effective. Wait, does that make him a fire stopper? No living thing has seen me since I swore the creed. Dude, we get it. You have helmet hair. Just calm down. Stop. I can stand. If he can stand a droid, he can stand anything. So the pile of discarded Mandalorian armor is probably as close as something this Disney is going to get to an actual pile of bodies or skeletons or something. I will not abandon this place until I have salvaged what remains. I'm pretty sure that's Mandalorian speak for someone stole my smartphone, they buried it in this pile, I am not leaving it behind. Din Djarin earned his signet and his jetpack. The armorer gets to be a badass taking out a group of stormtroopers. When she was st sitting still, I thought she was going to be like, my creed forbids me from revealing information. But instead she was like, this is the way to shove my foot up your ass. An R2-D2 body with arms and legs. Very cool. Taking them down the river sticks. I, I do appreciate that the, the Star Wars galaxy version of the river sticks is a lava river. Din Djarin now trusts IG-11, doesn't want him to die. In the very first episode, IG-11 did say multiple times that he was going to self-destruct since he thought they were about to get captured. I didn't expect that the season would end with that and that it would actually be a heartfelt moment. Come on, baby. Do the magic hand thing. And Grogu waves at him. I appreciate the sentiment, but I do not think this is the right situation to attempt friendship. Come on, Grogu. Every time you use the Force, Ben Kenobi gets a commission. Or is that just for Luke? Din Djarin uses his jetpack and grappling hook to get close to Moff. Tries to shoot into it. I'm getting a brief... I'm getting a bit of an Attack of the Clones vibe. Anakin on the flyer used by the Changeling. But I'm kind of digging it. 
I, I gotta admit that this show has made me like things about the prequels, so that's very impressive. And Din Djarin gave Quill a proper burial. So Kara and Grief are staying on Navarro, but Din Djarin will search for Grogu's people so he can reunite them. Good lead into season two. And I, I really respect any show that expects to get another season that doesn't end on a cliffhanger, because, man, it's frustrating when you when you're really getting invested to a show, it ends on a cliffhanger, and then they don't get another season. Like, hypothet I'm, I am aware that there is a season two. I'm looking forward to watching it. Hypothetically, if this was the last episode of The Mandalorian, it would be like, okay, you know what? They, they, uh, they resolved a lot of the major things. So, yeah. And Moff cuts himself out of the wreck using what I've heard others refer to as a darksaber. That's cool. There's apparently some really cool backstories to it, but I haven't watched the animated Star Wars series that yet. I will. I haven't gotten to it yet. Great season finale. Great season. I love the exploration of nature versus nurture through IG-11. Now, I realize that the stormtroopers outside the bar that we saw in the last episode and again in this episode do not belong to the client or Werner Herzog. But I do still want to know, we were told there were only four Stormtroopers. I'm not going to disclose the actual number, but it's significantly north of four. I'm not sad. Yes, you are. I'm an Earth droid. I've analyzed your voice. Okay, that's at least a little bit better than what's wrong with your eyes. I like to think that Moff Gideon, Moff Gideon just opens every conversation the way that he does in this. Like, he'll go into the Star Wars equivalent of a McDonald's have his men gun down everyone except the cook, and then he'll go up and say, the fry cook who was born on Tatooine and now makes a living selling reasonably priced bantha meat is well acquainted with the recipe frequently referred to as extra crispy. Now, if you watch this video very close to when I upload it, you might be wondering how I feel about the recently released teaser for Obi-Wan Kenobi. I don't really do reaction videos for trailers, so I'm just going to say it looks amazing. I'm really looking forward to that show. Uh, th that is a show that I will definitely be watching as soon as it comes out. I am not going to... Yeah. Next week, I will talk about the first episode of the second season. So until then, this is the way I have spoken.